I don't know what just happened, but if I ended up splitting into two videos, I will uh, work on that later. Sorry about that. But God doesn't put you in the battles that you're fighting randomly. God puts you in where you are to fight the battle that you're in because he has a plan, a specific plan and purpose for that battle. And people that come against you are not coming against you. They're actually coming against God. Um, especially if you're doing what God has called you to do. They're not, they're not fighting you. They're fighting God. So when you feel like you are in the midst of a battle and God is calling you to go out and to fight whatever battle that you're in, know that you are not going alone. Know that you are in where God has, had, God has you for a reason and that you can trust that God is in control of that situation. Okay? So we see that Joshua is now going into this battle. God is sending you into wherever God has put you for a reason, for a specific plan and purpose for such a time as this. We can trust that God is in control. We can trust that he can do all things. We can trust that we are not alone. We can trust that God is our banner. So we see God going before Joshua and fighting this battle because God has told Moses to send him out. So don't feel, good morning, Miss Phoebe. Don't feel like when you're in the battle, you're alone because God is in control of that battle. God is sending you out. If you're where God has put you, you're not in that battle alone. And we can trust that God is in control of our battles and that we are not fighting by ourselves. We are fighting for God. And that when we are fighting for God, we are not fighting a battle that we wonder how the outcome will be because we know that the outcome is gonna be the best it's supposed to be because God is fighting the battle for us. So we see Joshua going out. And Joshua was told by Moses, go out and fight the Amalekites in verse 9 of chapter 17 of Exodus. Go out and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill, staff of God in my hands. Okay, Moses, you want me to go to battle, and you want me to fight these Amalekites, and you're going to go stand on top of the hill with the stick. Okay, well, that's... Uh, that makes me feel a lot better. I'm glad that you'll be up there with uh, the stick, right? So we see those that are around us, right? And we're in the midst of our trial. And they come alongside us and they say, You, uh, you go. Go into your trial. Go into your battle. Don't worry. I'm praying for you. You go. And sometimes we might think, Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I need, you know. I just need you up there on that hill praying for me with that uh, stick. But that's more than a stick. And Moses is more than just standing on top of the hill. God has placed him in this battle for his purpose. And his purpose is to stand on that hill and watch this battle. Because it's not his purpose to fight the battle. His purpose is to pray for the battle. So we all have different places God puts us in the battle. God either put you ha has put you in the place of praying for someone, good morning Miss Nika, or God has put you in the place of actually fighting the battle. And both places are extremely important. Don't forsake the place God has put you, thinking it's not as important as being where they are. There are people that fight the battles. There are people that pray for those that are fighting the battles. And both places are just as important. God puts us where we are for a purpose and a reason. Don't forsake the place that God's put you because you feel it's not as important as where someone else's place is. God has you where you need to be because that's where he wants you, because that's where he'll get the most glory, because that's where you are best serving his purpose. We might not understand what God's purpose is, but God knows what his purpose is before we have to understand what it is. And we can't accomplish what our purpose is if we're doing someone else's purpose. God has you where you are for a reason. Trust that God knows more than you do, right? He definitely does. Okay, so Moses told Joshua, go fight the battle. I'm going to go stand on the mountain with the stick. Staff of God, got it. Nevertheless, he's on the mountain with a stick, and Joshua's actually in a battle. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. And as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. And whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. Okay. Joshua's in the battle. 
Joshua doesn't know what Moses is doing, okay? Joshua is, is fighting hand and fist, right? Swords against swords. The battle is, is before him, right? He is fighting. He doesn't know what Moses is doing. Moses is on top of the hill. He can see the battle, but he's one person. He's getting tired, right? Good morning, Miss Lynn. Phoebe and Nika are from our church, Hesperia First Assembly, and Miss Lynn is from uh, Bible Study Fellowship. Nika also goes with me to Bible Study Fellowship, so I'm glad that everybody's here this morning. So we see that Joshua is in the midst of his battle, right? But Moses, Moses is seeing the battle almost from God's perspective, right? Because he's seen it from above, from the mountain. And he's holding that staff of God, right? And he's a person. He's a man. He gets tired. And when his hands go down, the Amalekites are winning. But when his hands are up, the Israelites are winning. Where has God put you in this battle? Where has God put you in your battle? Has God put you to come alongside someone that's praying that you could help lift them up, that you can be uplifting to them? Has God put you as someone that is an encouragement to someone in a battle? Because sometimes the battle's not ours. Sometimes God calls us to come alongside someone to be what they need to lift them up in whatever place they are in the battle. Maybe they're not even in the battle, but you're there to come alongside them. God has everybody in a specific place for a specific reason, for a specific time, for such a time as this. Don't forsake the place that God puts you in the battle. Don't wonder that, oh, I'm not as important as they are because I'm not in their position right now. That's not what God has for you. God has you where you are for now. God doesn't have you where you are forever. God has you where you are for now. They were where you were. We are all in different places at different times for different seasons because that's where God has us for such a time as this. Trust that God knows what he's doing. Trust that God knows that he's in control. Trust that God will have the best outcome for all those that are involved, right? So God is, Moses is up there on that mountain. And when his arms go down, the enemy is winning. When his arms are lifted high, the Israelites are winning. So how can we come alongside those to lift others up? Joshua doesn't know what's going on. Yet as he's winning, oh my gosh, my son is online. Good morning, son. I'm glad that you're here. So as Joshua lifts up his hand, or as Moses lifts up his hands, Joshua's winning his battle. Joshua doesn't even understand why he's winning. Joshua doesn't correlate that Moses' hands going up and down is helping him win his battle. But nevertheless, I do know. <laughs> yes, I know. You know, son. <laughs> oh, he's so funny. He is named after the Joshua of the Bible, though. But anyway, God is there. God is fighting the battle for them all, and none of them even realize it. I don't think Joshua of the Bible, <laughs> thank you, understood what was going on. He was just doing what he was told. We all need to do what we're told. God puts us in a place so we can do what we have been set out to do for such a time as this. And if we can do our purpose to the best of our ability, not just us will benefit, but those around us will benefit. Joshua being obedient to the calling God had on his life gave the victory to the Israelites. Moses being obedient to the call that God had on his life gave the Israelites victory along with Joshua. And neither one knew. Neither one could understand what was going on, but nevertheless, they were accomplishing their purpose. Because now we see it's not just Joshua. It's not just the Israelites. It's not just Moses. Because up on that mountain, as he grew tired, Aaron and her held his hands up, Moses' hands, one on one side and one on the other, so the hands remain steady until sunset. God has put you where you are to be uplifting to those around you. How are you holding up someone's hands? Because we can't do it on our own. God has not created us to be an island. God has created you to come alongside other Christians and uphold them. We need to be Aaron and her to those around us. We need to be the ones that are coming alongside other Christians and saying, brother, you don't have to do this by yourself. I am here. I'm here to be there for you. I will uplift you. I will hold you up. I will not tear you down. I will not talk to, about you to other people. I will not be the one that brings down the Israelite army because I can't take the time to lift up your hands. 
that's what we're doing. That's the battle that's being fought now. We have spiritual battles that are going on right now around us. People that need us to come alongside. People that need us to lift them up. And are we doing that? Are we doing that? Are we forsaking the place that God has put us in our battle because we think it's not important? We're not coming alongside other people. We're not doing what we need to do because God has given us a purpose and we're forsaking that purpose. We're saying we're too busy. We're too tired. It, it takes time out of my day to go to church. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to read my word. I don't want to be, I don't want to go ahead and do that. I don't want to serve there. I don't want to be that. You know what? Then don't complain when you're in the battle and the battle is losing and you're losing your battle and you wonder why God, why am I here? Well, maybe you're not doing the purpose God has for you. And maybe those that are supposed to be coming alongside you aren't either. You need to surround yourself with those that are gonna uplift you. You need to surround yourself with those that are gonna come alongside you and lift up your hands. Don't expect those that are gonna come alongside you and lift up your hands. Don't expect to find them in the bar. Don't, ex don't expect to find them at the bowling alley. Don't expect to find them just in a casual group of friends. The people that are going to come alongside you and fight battles with you, they're located at church. They're located in ministry. They're located next door and they're, they're hungry to fight, to learn the, to learn the word, to fight alongside you. I, I'm amazed at this group of um, people that Jimmy and I are meeting with every other Monday that are hungry to be in the word hungry excited to go through the word of god for the first time not saved living their lives and wanting to meet with jimmy and i just to go through the word of god and when i go to other places i struggle to find people that would want to even come alongside me so you know you have to go where god calls you you have to go to the people that are excited and wanting and longing to read the word and to be in prayer and to fight that battle with you and it comes wherever God leads you. Don't don't put God in a box. Don't don't think, oh well, I'm not going to find God there, so I don't need to worry about that. God can God can place people who are going to come alongside you anywhere. So don't think that you are not doing what God's called you to do. If you are where God has put you, God will bring the people alongside you. But you also need to be in the word and you need to be in prayer. Don't think that you're never going to find them if you don't ever look for them. Because we have to look for those situations. God has put us where we are for such a time as this. So they came alongside Moses, right? They came alongside Moses and they were lifting up his hands. Be those that lift others up. Don't be those that tear people down. I don't even think they probably realized. They might have realized, but they, I don't think they understood the whole ramifications. I think they were just coming alongside a friend when they were lifting up Moses' hands. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. They were fighting a battle on two battlefronts, one on top of a mountain and one actually in the battle. Those that are fighting for us, for our freedoms in other countries, they need our prayers. They need us to come alongside and they need us to be in prayer for them because who else is in prayer for them? If, you, if God puts it on your heart to pray for those people, you need to be in prayer for them because that's where God's called you, to be Moses, to lift them up. All right. Little Bible bookmark for the women's ministry to be able to raise funds for women's retreat coming up in September. All you ladies that are listening, hope you can come with us. Okay, so we have Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. And then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll. Remember it. Make sure Joshua hears it. And because I'm going to blot out Amalek from memory. So God is saying, you need to remember what's happened right here. You need to remember what's happened right here because this is important. Because I'm doing this, I'm doing this work right now. I'm in control of this situation and I'm doing this work and everybody needs to understand that it's not Joshua that won this battle. It's not Moses that won this battle. It's not Aaron and her that won this battle. It's not even the Israelites that won this battle. I, God, won this battle. That's what God is wanting them to remember. That it's not us. We don't win the battles of God. God wins the battles of God through us. It's because of God 
that we can win the battles that we win. What battle has God got you in today? That he's wanting to give you victory, but he's wanting you to also give him glory. He wants to give us victory. He doesn't want us to have defeat. He wants us to have victory. We can have victory. In the name of Jesus, we can have victory in whatever our battle is. But we have to give him glory through that victory. It's not our victory. We fight for God. The whole point of this story is that they were fighting for God. God's way. God had told them very specifically how he wanted them to fight. And he wanted them to step out. And he wanted them to do but they had to do it God's way. They had to do it God's way. We have to fight God's way. We can't wonder why we are failing in the battle that we're in when we're not doing it God's way. God wants to give us victory in our battles, but we have to fight those battles God's way, not our own way. Because our own way is not God's way and God won't get the glory. Because what, what happens when we fight the battles our way? We glorify ourselves. And I can't tell you how many times people try to say, oh, you're doing so great. You've lost so much weight. You, you, you. And I have to always try and take it back. God gets the glory. God did this. I'm doing this onto God. The only reason I'm running, the only reason I'm preaching, the only reason I'm doing everything I'm doing is by the grace of God. But, but by God. But by the grace of God. Don't take the glory that others give you. Because that is, sometimes it is just not of God. God is not trying to give you glory to puff yourself up. Sometimes those are tests to see, are you going to give me glory in this situation or are you going to take the glory for yourself? And you have to be very careful that you're always giving God glory in your situation because you are not in your situation to give yourself glory. You're in your situation to give him glory, right? All right. So they were supposed to remember what God had done. They were supposed to remember how that battle was won and they're supposed to remember because God is going to blot out Amalek. You fight against God's people, he will blot you out from memory. They were going to be remembered no more. The only memory of them is their defeat. So that's, what ha that's the ending result of those that fight against God, is that God will blot them from memory. And you may not feel like that's going to happen in your lifetime. You may not feel that your enemies are getting what they deserve. Trust God. Trust God. They will get what they deserve. God will not be mocked. God will not allow his people to be hurt or punished without coming against their enemies and them suffering because of what they put his people through. Your suffering is not in vain. God is in control of your situation and your enemies will be overcome because God is not mocked. God will always get the victory in his situation. And then it's awesome. This is where we get Jehovah Nissi. Because it says, Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. So God is saying, the Lord is my banner. I am your banner. I am the one that's in control of this situation. I will be a banner over you. I will protect you. I will shine forth for you. I will over... I will be over you in this situation. You are not alone. When those see me, they will know that it's I that are that is doing this thing through you. That that we he is the one that draws others to to himself. But we have to be obedient. A banner is only important. A banner is only useful when it's opened up, correct? That banner is only important when it's when it's being displayed. If God is our banner, but we don't open that banner up and it's rolled up in a corner, then you know what? God is not getting the glory he deserves. How are you opening the banner of the Lord so others can see it in your life? God has put you where you are so you can open the banner of the Lord. He can be Jehovah Nissi. He can be the banner in your life. He can draw others to you. That's his goal. That's his purpose. He wants to be the banner in your life. He wants to be the sign that calls others to him through you. He wants to be that in your life. How can you allow him to do that? Are you allowing them to him to do that? Are you preventing him from doing that? Does that freak you out? Some people, it freaks them out. They don't want to be displaying the Lord's banner in their life. They want, they want to be, you know, shh, closet Christian. I don't want to tell anybody. I just want to go about my day. You know, they don't want others to know about Jesus. 
because then they're going to ask them questions and they might not know the answer and then what am I going to do? Guess what? They're not asking because of you. They're asking because of God. God has put you in your place for such a time as this. Show that God knows. Show that God's in control. Show that God is the banner in your life. How is God being the banner in your life? Allow God to be Jehovah Nissi in your life. God wants to be Jehovah Nissi in your life. God wants to be the banner that shows himself worthy, that gives him glory, that gives him honor in you. And what will that do for you? You will be like the Israelites. You will have victory in his name. Why? Because God is in control. Because God is bigger than your situation. Because God can use all things for his glory, correct? But how? How do we, how do we allow this to happen? Well, like the Israelites, they were chosen people, right? Well, as we become saved, as we are Christians, we don't become Israelites. You know, I'm not Israelite. I'm not Jewish. But we, we ask Jesus into our heart. We ask Jesus into our heart. We say, someone asked me, and I'm asking you, do you have Jesus as your personal Savior? Do you have Jesus as your personal Savior? Is he Jehovah Nissi in your life? Is he the banner in your life? Is your life displaying Jehovah Nissi? God is my banner. If Jesus is the Lord of your life, if God is, God's banner is being displayed, how do we allow that to happen? How do we show others that God is Jehovah Nissi in our life? If we have Jesus Christ as our Savior, what does that look like in our lives, right? Do you have Jesus as your Savior? What does that look like? We have to A. Admit. Admit we're a sinner. We have to admit we're a sinner. We have to ask Christ for forgiveness. We fail. We fall short. Our arms go down, right? In battle. We we don't we don't always have the victory in our lives. And without Christ you can never have a victory. You may think you're doing great. You may think you not need the Lord. I'm telling you this, your life might seem fine here, but you are destined for an eternity without God. An eternity without God is hell. This is not what matters. This life is not what matters. Eternity with God is what matters. Eternity apart from God is hell. Ask God for forgiveness. Be right with God. God has a specific plan and purpose for you that he wants to accomplish in and through you. He wants to be Jehovah Nissi in your life. He wants to show you how he can do all things through you. He wants to show you how he is going to give you a specific plan and purpose. He's going to lift you up. He's going to call you. He's going to give you things beyond your wildest dreams. God gives you a plan and purpose beyond what you could possibly imagine. But we have to trust him. We have to turn over our lives to him. We have to admit we're a sinner, that we can't do this on our own, that we have to ask him for forgiveness, that we've tried to do this on our own. And you're not the only one. We all ask for forgiveness every day. I fall short every day. You ask a Christian if they're honest, they should be real and they should tell you, yes, I fall short every day. Admit you're a sinner. We're all sinners. Any Christian that tells you different is wrong. Christians are all sinners, saved by grace. Admit you're a sinner, saved by grace. We are all sinners, saved by grace. Admit your need for Jesus. Believe. Believe in Jesus. Believe he is the way. Believe he is the truth. Believe he is the life. Believe that there is no other way to come to God except by Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess he is Lord. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Jesus wants to give you hope of a future. Jesus wants to set you on a right path. Jesus died for you when you still hated him. Jesus loved you. Jesus died for you, and he would have died for you had you been the only person on this planet. He still would have died for you because Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Believe that Jesus loves you. No one on this planet may love you, but Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you and he has a specific plan and purpose for you. Jesus wants to be Jehovah Nissi. He wants to be the banner in your life that shows who
who he is through you. Believe. And then see. Confess. Confess Jesus is Lord. Tell other people about Jesus. How are you confessing that Jesus is Lord today? You can share this message. That tells other people Jesus is Lord. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Share who he is. Share what he's done in your life. Be who God's called you to be. Don't be afraid to share God with those around you. You may be the only God that they get today. You may be the only God in their life. The only piece of God that they get to see may be you. Confess God today. Confess what he's done. Confess what he's doing. Confess where you are. Confess where you want to be. Confess how God has brought you from where you are, from where you were to where you are. Confess how God has done amazing things in your life. Confess how God can do all things through you. Confess that you can't. You can't. You can't. People come to me all the time. I can't do this. It's too difficult. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this situation. You're right. You can't. You can't. God can. The world wants to tell you, you have the power, you have the ability, it's all you, you can do all things through yourself, and that's a lie. The world is feeding you a lie. You cannot do this. You cannot do this on your own. You do not have the ability to do this on your by yourself, and that's the world telling you that. And when you fail, when you can't do it by yourself, it's the world that condemns you for not being able to do it by yourself. God has never called us to do this by himself. You can't, but God can, can, because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Not you that strengthens you, but Christ that strengthens you. How are you allowing Christ to strengthen you today? How are you sharing that Christ can strengthen you today to be who God's called you to be? Allow God. Allow God. God's not going to force you. That's the amazing thing about God. God's not going to force you himself on you. He's not going to force you to accept him as Savior. He's not going to force you to admit you're a sinner. He's not going to force you to believe in his name. He's not going to force you to confess that Jesus is Lord. The world forces you. The world forces you to think this way, to do this thing, to be a certain way. You, in order to comply to social graces around you, we have to think and act a certain way. God doesn't force you to do anything. God doesn't force you to do anything. God sits back and has already given you the invitation. He's died for you already. You're already saved. All you have to do is accept it. But if he's not going to force you to accept it because he loves you, because he's a gentleman, because he's a gracious God, and he doesn't force himself on anyone, you have to accept it. You have to admit you're a sinner. You have to believe that he's the one that's going to save you. You have to confess that he's Lord on your own. He's not going to force you. Got one more. We will take order. I will take orders on colors. Um, definitely raised $25 yesterday at church. Woot woot for women's ministry for women's retreat coming up in September. I just pray blessings on your life. I pray that you would allow God to be Jehovah Nisi, to be a banner in your life, to show others of him, to show others God through you. Allow God to be Jehovah Nisi in your life. I thank you that you've come. Thank you, Chanel. I hope that you click back and you get a chance to watch the whole, the whole message. And I know people are actually running with me while I'm sharing. So if that's a blessing to you as well, I hope that you're able to do that also. I try to really make this... Today has been 36 minutes, and it's going to be, for me, 36 minutes is 5,795, 5,800 steps. 5,800 steps is 2.97 miles going at this pace, sharing the word, crocheting, reading God's word. You know, I'm wanting to encourage you, not bring you down, just give you encouragement. You can get up, you can move, you can be healthy, you can share God's word. These are all choices that you have. You can choose Jesus Christ as your savior. They're just options. No one's forcing anybody to do anything, but I definitely want to give you the choice to be able to choose God, choose health, choose to...
place an order for a bookmark in your favorite colors so you can support women's ministry. And I just thank you guys for coming, and I pray you have a blessed day. Bye-bye.